Hey y'all, welcome to the Style Chronicles. Today is my 30th birthday, so I am 30 now. Um, my dad doesn't know how that happened. He said he's only 40, so there's no way I could possibly be 30, but anyhow, I'm 30. <laughs> anyhow, I wanted to thank you all for your um, well wishes, for your um, birthday wishes, as well as your well wishes. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I really, really, I know I say that over and over again, but I really do. I do appreciate each and every single one of you um, for your kindness and for your, you know, thoughts and your well wishes. So, Thank you, and I thought I would do an outfit of the day, and then um, I've got kind of little things that I need to talk about that um, don't really fit anywhere, so I'm just going to do that here. So I'll show you my outfit of the day, and then I'll come back and talk, and if you guys don't want to hear me, you can X out. I know um, I talk a lot, so let me um, stand back there so you guys can see. Old Navy Rockstar Jeggings, just the simple Rockstar Jeggings, and I've got on a white camisole underneath, that is from Forever 21, and then my um, Target Pierce Pumps, just really simple, and my blouse is from Charlotte Russe, it's really cute, it's got these mint polka dots on it, I thought that was really pretty, um, and then on the back it doesn't have anything but it's got a zipper back there. This is one thing that annoys me uh, when I go shopping for blouses or shirts. Um, the pleating that is here or shirts that have ruffles or anything on the front that does not continue onto the back, I usually, I cannot stand that. I hate that. And I really, I almost did not buy this shirt for that reason, but I figured the fact that it had a zipper in the back kind of made up for for it a little bit since it had something else interesting. But I really, I don't like shirts that do that. I think. To me, it just seems like, why couldn't you continue this, you know, all the way? Or, um, you know, I don't know, it just, I think it kind of cheapens the shirt a little bit, if that makes any sense. I, I don't know. That's just me. But I loved the pattern of this one, um, so I contradicted myself and bought it. Just the little, you know, it's cream and it's got these fresh little green polka dots. Um, and I don't have anything, really, uh, in that green color. I want some green, some jeggings that are that color. Um, but I'm not be, I'm not able to find them. I really I've looked at the mall and I can't find them anywhere. Of course I have not gone in Forever 21, and that's why I went into Charlotte Russe just to look. I found two things out of the entire store that I liked: um, this and then a racerback tank that has a heart in mint stones, um, and it's gray. But that's it. The rest of the store I was like seriously. I mean that store is like all about teenage girls. Um, Forever 21 can kind of you know you can go. You don't have to be 21 to shop there or a teenager to shop there. Their clothes can kind of, you know, you can adapt them to your taste. Charlotte Russe, I think, is just, just teenage. Um, but anyhow, so there's this. And I just have on my simple studs and my ear, my rings. That's it. It is um, Thursday. I've got lots to do today, so I didn't want to be too fussy. Um, and let me go ahead and get started with, um, oh, on my mouth, I have... Um, Buxom, the Buxom White Russian, and on my cheeks I have a new blush, it's the NARS Angelica, and this is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, I traded in, well I didn't trade in, I took back my Tarte Tipsy that I bought not too long ago, the Coral um, Tarte Blush. I took that back because it just does not, it doesn't suit me. I don't, I don't work, I guess, well with orangey um, blushes. I can pull off an orange or coral lip, but as far as a blush is concerned, I think I need to stick to my blue-based um, pinker, you know, or brown-pink shades. So here's Angelica. It is beautiful. It's what I have on. Um, there's a swatch on my finger and then a swatch on my hand if you can see it. It's just very, very pretty. It does have, can you see all the glitter? It does have a ton of glitter but it falls off it does not stay on your um, cheek so it blends out really really well so that's what I took back my Tarte Tipsy to get um, I wanted to get Tarte Doll Face but they didn't have Doll Face and Angelica, Desire, and Guidi are on my NARS list so that's what I, I just jumped to the next thing um, so there's that and then next up oh I also got my little birthday um, the Fresh Sugar 
birthday balms. And these are so cute. They're the two little sugar, this one's sugar rose or sugar rose, and this is sugar. And they smell so good. And if you guys, you know, remember one of my absolute favorite perfumes, um, aside from La Vanilla, is the fresh sugar lemon. That is my absolute favorite summer scent. So these kind of remind me of that. And here's this one. It's a pinkish. It really doesn't have any pigment that pulls on your lips or anything, but these are awesome. You can put them on. I put them on before I go to bed at night and um, I can feel them slip on my lip in the morning still. So that is really cool because nothing ever really lasts that long for me. Um, but there's those two items. Next up, a bunch of um, kind of books and just, you know, this is kind of like housekeeping things that, things that I've been meaning to mention that I can't really put into a video of sorts. So that's what it is. Um, my son's birthday. This is, I'm just going to cover. This is his birthday invitation. It looks like a, well, it just says Abel there, but it looks like it has other stuff written here. It looks like a boarding pass. Um, and it's really, really neat. And I got these off of Etsy. There is a lady on Etsy who has a store. It's called 505 Designs. It's not on here. Um, but you purchase the invitation or the party package and the, she will customize the invitation for your, you know, with your information. And she does not just these, she does several other party things. Like I've already decided my daughter's fifth birthday in December will be, and I will be ordering my invitations from her because um, they're just really unique. And so like this one, see it's got, like when I cut it out, it's got the notches for boarding pass. Um, and then it's got all this over here that look like a real boarding pass. So my son's um, first birthday is airplane themed. So I'm gonna decorate um, with kind of an airplane theme, you know, white clouds in the ceiling made out of balloons and just airplane stuff. So hopefully I can share some of that with you guys, but I wanted to show you the imitation just so you knew um, the theme and everything. And I, like I said, I will link this down below. Um, it was like, I had it within, I think I bought it like on a Monday and it was done by Tuesday. I printed on Wednesday and I've had these out um, since that Thursday. So, you know, it was really quick process. There was no delay. And I did, you know, I did have to cut them out myself and I requested that they were printed on cardstock, but it just, it's really, really cute. And she's got so many precious things. Um, to go through and, you know, choose from on her paper, papery site. Um, so I, like I said, I will include that and they're just really, really cute. Um, it says, if you see it at the top, it says Able Airlines, um, which is cute. So um, that's for John Abel's first birthday. Now, books. Okay. I have been reading, I, I read every night while I, you know, I'm trying to go to bed or before I go to bed. And let me pick this up so I can, sorry. Alrighty, okay, so yeah, I read every night um, while I'm going to bed. And I read Hunger Games and then picked up this one, Catching Fire, and read this and it was excellent. I mean, these are good books. Um, I need to pick up Mockingjay to finish the trilogy. This is a great book, though, if you are interested in that whole utopian. Um, utopian societies really don't interest me for the most part. This one has, you know, it's a utopian society, but it's got a little bit of romance in it. It's got some suspense um, in it, too. So it's kind of a mixture. It's a good, it's not like overly scientific, if you understand what I mean. Um, so I like that. Uh, it's an easy read. So this one and then Mockingbird, uh, if you pick them up, this one was like $7.99 at Walmart. The Hunger Games was $6.99 when I got it. So if you pick them up at Walmart, they're relatively um, cheaper than other places I've seen them. So there's that one. Like I said, I'm done with that. Have to get Mockingjay in order to finish and then um, hopefully I'll be done with that trilogy. Still need to read the last book or the newest book that was released by, um, what's her name? Sarah Shepard for Pretty Little Liars. There is a book, I think, 11, that was really, well, the last two, actually. The one that was written in A's, um, from A's point of view, and then the, the last one that was released. Um, and I think there's another one coming out in June or July, so I have to get that to read. Those are on my list. Next up would be this lucky one. I picked this up last week. I want to say Tuesday, and I've been speeding through it. Um, I picked it up because I knew the movie was coming out Friday and 
I just really wanted to read it. And it's the Nicholas Sparks, The Lucky One. I know it's reversed, I'm so sorry. I, I tell myself I need to switch it and then I don't. And then I do videos where I need to see myself. So yeah, anyhow, um, I'm on chapter 30, way back there. And it's really good so far. My son has attacked, I, I can't stand this. I, I like my books to be like fresh all the time. And I don't really like to bend the spines when I read or anything. Um, so, you know, you'll never catch me, like, bending the book back. Um, but my son is, you know, book curious, so he has really torn this one up. So there's that one. Really good book if you like, you know, Nicholas Sparks, the kind of love story, um, stuff like that. It is different from Dear John, and I think the ending is a lot better than Dear John 2. I really don't know that's what I've read, so I've got this much more to find out the ending. But I can tell you I skipped ahead a little and read, like, the last paragraph. So I know it's a good, good ending. Anyhow, um, next up, this one that I have been reading for several months. My dad went to um, Georgia last year and brought this book back for me. And it's Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind, a bestseller's odyssey from Atlanta to Hollywood. It's by Ellen F. Brown and John Wiley Jr. Gone with the Wind is one of my absolute favorite books. It's one of my absolute favorite movies. And the movie is nothing like the book, of course. But read it when I was younger, and I just I had this love for Gone with the Wind growing up, and my dad knows that. And when he was um, in Georgia, he toured I think a plantation, and he went to a bunch of different you know things, and and he saw this book and thought he you know that I would be interested in reading it. And all it is is she has written the book over uh, you know years, um, and the only person that had ever read it was her husband. And she had a girlfriend that knew she was writing it, but she had never read it. She had never even talked about it with her. Um, she didn't talk about it with people in general at all. The girlfriend began to push for her to um, get it published. And she worked for a publishing house, and she'd mentioned it to her boss. So in the end, they ended up you know, getting the, the manuscript and creating a book from it. And this is just Margaret Mitchell's journey while that book was being published. Um, the changes that were made to the book, like, and I had always known, but um, Scarlett's name was not always Scarlett. Um, it was not always Scarlett O'Hara. It was, starts with a T, tip, tipsy? No. It's in here. Woo. Um, anyhow, so little things like that, little, you know, character flaws that she might have corrected, names, flow issues, things like that, that she she corrected while the book was already being, you know, published. I mean, it was like in public, you know, being processed and everything, and she was still, you know, going through and making these changes. And then she also did a, a bunch of things in her contract with the publishing agency that changed the way that books are published. Um, it, it changed the way that authors were granted access to their books, and also, you know, the way that they were... Um, It just, you know, the, the amount of control they were given, the way they were uh, rewarded for their efforts and stuff like that. So it's got, you know, pictures. I mean, it's just a really neat. It's really neat kind of, you know, she wrote this book. She was not from the plantation era, you know, or the Civil War era or anything like that. She had family members that lived back then and wrote from their kind of, their stories that she had heard growing up. And so that was, you know, that's really, really neat. Um, anyhow, so that's what I'm reading it's kind of, uh, since it's, you know, a true life book, it's kind of what I read in between the other books that I read, you know, the easy reads, and then I've always got a more challenging read um, with me. So there's that one. That took me forever, I'm sorry. Um, next up is the Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. This I've heard so much about, and so many of you have encouraged me to read it, so I picked it up. I know um, my friend Jan Mia, suggested it. Uh, she has not read it, but I believe her girlfriends um, have been on her to read it. So I figured, you know what, I think I'll give it a go. And so far it's pretty good. I have gotten, like, I think in two, 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 what page is this? 30. <laughs> yes, I've gotten that far because I picked up The Lucky One and Fifty Shades of Grey together. And started reading them together, like I'd read a chapter and then read a chapter, and then this one I just got, you know, so much more interested in and wanted to finish. So this is what I will read after that. There's that. Now, I know you guys like when I share what my children 
are reading too. So that's what I'm going to share now. And this book, when I picked up both um, of those Fifty Shades of Grey and The Lucky One, I picked up this one for my daughter. And it's my big book of beginner books about me. And it's a book, foot book, ear book, tooth book, knee book, nose book, eye book. And they're Dr. Seuss collection. They're not all written by Dr. Seuss. Um, Dr. Seuss had two other writers that wrote in his style that also published books that are in the Dr. Seuss series. So, but it's just kind of a combination. And my daughter loves these. She likes the rhymes. Um, and, you know, they're easy for her. It's, I, I let her, well, now I'm letting her spell the word out to me when she sees the letters. Um, so they're easy words. They're clear, you know, in the pictures. The illustrations are always funny. She thinks they're hilarious. So that's what I am reading to her. The other things that we read, um, these are just her favorites. And I, I have to say that I, it's, guilt, it's my fault that they are her favorite because these were my favorites growing up. Um, this is Dr. Seuss's, well, this is Theo Lesig, which that is Dr. Seuss, but that is his actual name, Theo Lesig. I think it was Theodore Lesig. Anyhow, um, In a People House. This is Ten Apples Up on Top and The Shape of Me and other stuff. And see this one, he's writing as Dr. Seuss. And um, these books, they just, I love them. Um, you can see the front, and I'll show you here. You can see the handwriting right here. It says Erica, March the, the word the, 21st, 1989. This is one of my books from when I was little. Um, my dad keeps everything. So... This is one of the books that he used to read to me, and um, now I'm reading it to my daughter, which is really neat. So there's that one, and then this one also. Um, it just has my maiden name in it. I've, I have always had a habit of writing my first and last name in the beginning of books, as well as the date that I may have acquired it or the date that I may have read it. So these books all have that inside of it. But like I said, they're just, you know, easy books. They have words that are clearly written, and they're big enough to where I can ask her what letter is that, what letter, you know, and she'll spell it out to me. She does not read words yet, like, to read the word, um, but she can look at the letter and tell me, you know, what it is, and um, that's really neat. So that's what we've been reading and what we've been doing and we've, we've been up to and part of my party planning um, anyhow, hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. I am looking forward to um, the rest of the day. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what my birthday has in store for me. I have already um, opened my blinds and the neighborhood ducks are sitting outside on my yawn, on my yawn, on my lawn. So that's great. That's cool. I like that. I, I like seeing them in the mornings. Um, actually, they laid eggs at my neighbor's house. And it's so funny because I was walking, well, I, I went to run the other day, and as I was walking by before I started running, there were these four eggs. And I thought, oh, how weird. Why would he put chicken eggs there? And then later I came home and I'm like, he left chicken eggs in his front yard. And I was telling my husband, and my husband's like, oh, those are going to stink if somebody, you know, cracks them. And then we saw the ducks, and then I thought, wait, do ducks lay eggs that look like chicken eggs? And my husband's like, well, duh. <laughs> part of that family so yeah I was like oh that's why the ducks are there um anyhow so yeah hopefully we'll get to see little baby ducks I don't know anyhow so that's why they're sticking around but like I said hope you guys have a wonderful day bye bye